Good. Well, welcome back. I guess I'd better say remember to turn your phones off. I've only just turned mine off. Um, <clears throat> well, welcome back for the, for the afternoon. Um, we were two slightly shorter talks, one after another. I'm afraid it's necessary to fit everything in. So <clears throat> my apologies for that. Our first speaker this afternoon is Amjad Rashid, who's a postdoc research fellow at the Institute of Middle Eastern and Islamic Studies at Durham University. So he's probably had a longer journey than almost everybody, perhaps including those from Brighton. Um, he told me he had little choice about coming to talk to us today on what's a very important subject, because his boss told him to. Um, now, Amjid's research is on the politics of the Middle East, particularly the regions of Kurdistan, where he was recently, and Iraq and Syria. He's published on these subjects, including recently in The Guardian, and is a consultant for various think tanks. Um, he's talking to us today about IS and security in the Middle East. Amjad, thank you very much. Can you hear me all? Thank you Adia, so much uh, for this uh, opportunity and for the Royal Society at Salas. Uh, this is the first time here to be at Salas, so I hope it's not going to be the last uh, time as well. Uh, you, you can't hear me. How about now? Right. I'll be talking briefly on uh, the Middle East as a region. And then uh, we'll move and talk about uh, the rise of ISIS, giving a brief introduction to the development of violent Salafism uh, in the region. Uh, I hope I will be using some, some concepts. I hope you understand them all. And if you don't, Mr. Google is always there to, to help you. And you can, you can ask me afterward. Um, and then I'll be uh, finalizing with some uh, uh, concluding remarks. So the Middle East uh, as a region is a competitive, fragmented, and penetrated regional system by great powers. It is therefore in a constant disorder. Uh, while the causes of peace and security, <clears throat> while in the cause of peace and security, uh, the Arab League, the region's largest international uh, global organization, has been mobilized in numerous occasions. Uh, for a number of reasons, these efforts have uh, often failed. The region is dominated by authoritarian regime types, and yet its uh, drift of a hegemonic power, able to impose its own will on the subsystem and therefore away with uh, rivalries. Power is afloat, evenly distributed, and does not necessarily manifest itself in terms of such traditional indicator as the size of the population, territory, economy, uh, GNP, uh, geography, nor <clears throat> does <clears throat> sorry, the size of the military budget of the armed forces or military hardware provide sufficient indicator of power and influence. The region is also characterized by multi-layer identities the map of the region was uh, drawn by the colonial power, mainly, mainly Great Britain and France, after the First Great War in 1918. This catalyzed constant conflict in the region. Thus, the region is characterized by inter-state rivalries and increasingly exposed of identity politics, which, which, mani which, is, which manifests itself in the inter and inter conflict. The Kurds, for example, are still suffering from the consequences of the uh, uh, drawing of the map of World War, uh, uh, the First World War. There are, there, there are roughly 40 million uh, of them are dis distributed among four countries, uh, Iran, Iraq, Syria, and Turkey. Uh, that was, of course, after the collapse of the Ottoman Empire. Now, bear in mind that the nation states uh, system, or the map of if Europe was, you know, uh, a, it was a, a genuine from inside, the map of Europe was drawn from inside. That's why the nation state arguably uh, worked in, the, in Europe, while in the Middle East it was shaped from outside, uh, as I mentioned. 
Um, of course, so the, the back to the Kurds, the victims of Psychis Pico, not only them, of course, uh, Psychis Pico agreement between uh, uh, the French and the British authorities in 1916. It was a secret uh, uh, agreement exposed in, uh, a year later after the Bolshevik uh, uh, revolution. Anyways, so uh, the Psychis Pico agreement was later confirmed in San Remo Conference in 1920. Back again to the, to, the, uh, to the region. The regional system is vulnerable to the behavior of sub-state and non-state actors, and many of its states are still suffering, from, uh, uh, are still suffering at the hand of violent jihadi groups who have stepped into the vacuum created by the, weak, by the weakening of the iron grip of the central government in several Arab countries. Indeed, in the 21st century, it seems to be the smaller Arab states outperforming their largest counterpart and non-state actors making waves. The region is still suffering from uh, an alternative, or, uh, sorry, lack uh, an alternative uh, political forces to fulfill the expectation of the masses and the people and achieve uh, development and prosperity eventually. Uh, the Islamic, Islamic radical group, such as the Islamic State, seems to have become the substitute for the past political forces for doing the mission. Now, violent Salafism, uh, and I deliberately call it violent Salafism, uh, seems to be one of the most challenging issues that faces the region nowadays. Salafism uh, in the Islamic tradition uh, I hope many of you are now interested in political Islam and the region itself, so this will be hopefully very helpful for you. Salafism in the Islamic tradition was actually a reformist movement. It emerged at the end of the Abbasid uh, Caliphate in the 11th century. And all what it uh, wanted, all what this movement wanted was the return to the true Islam by peaceful means, where the law of the divine is represented in the Quran and Hadith. Hadith is the, te the teaching of the Prophet Muhammad, Prophet of Islam. Violent Salafism is relatively a contemporary phenomenon. Violent Salafism was introduced arguably in the writings of the Egyptian scholar Sayyid Qutb in the, 16, in the, in the uh, 60s, uh, mid 60s. It also uh, interestingly, developed with the rise of left radical groups and movement in Europe uh, in the 60s and the 70s. Now, Sayyid Qutb himself resented pan-Arabism policies of a President uh, Jamal Abdel Nasser and called for a regime change. He was later arrested for plotting against President Nasser and was executed in late August 1966. Now, Ayman al-Zawahiri, the current leader of Al-Qaeda, was heavily influenced by, uh, by uh, Sayyid Qutb. Violent Salafism was also materialized in the Afghan war against the Soviet Union. Yet, the milestone, arguably, is the Kuwaiti crisis in, in 1991. The occupation of Kuwait divided the Arab world between those who rejected the occupation, uh, mainly Syria and Egypt at that time, um, and those who accepted it, uh, such as Yemen and the PLO. Uh, the American soldier, soldiers were not welcomed in the Holy Land uh, by the Arab Mujahideen in Afghanistan. So the Arab Mujahideen were in Afghanistan. They offered the House of Saud, Saudi Arabia, to come and fight for them and drive the Iraqi army outside Kuwait, but not to bring the Western power in the region. Now, what happened is that the House of Saud rejected Osama bin Laden's uh, offer to defend the Holy Shrine. The latter then vowed to attack the US and its ally uh, in the region. Uh, another development you might find it interesting, and perhaps nobody's to speak about it, sadly, is the Algerian civil war in 1991 uh, and up until 2002, and also the Bosnian war in 1992 until 1995. 
those two events had their own share in the rise of and the development of violent Salafism. The establishment of Al-Qaeda in 1993 in Afghanistan witnessed the, bur the born of the new trend of global Salafi uh, radicalism uh, or, or uh, violent Salafism. While Taliban uh, uh, group Islamic Armée and Front, uh, Front Islamic Dissalou had locally based agendas in, in Afghanistan and Algeria, the last two were uh, in Algeria or operated in Algeria and France, inside France, Al-Qaeda itself transformed the agenda of, of, of jihad or violent Salafism from, from local to global uh, to the international level. Al-Qaeda Al began to attack the U.S. and its ally in the world. The first attack was the U.S. Army uh, residence in, in Gold, Gold Muhur uh, Hotel in, in Aden in 1992, followed by the bombing of the World Trade Center in 1993, and the bombing of the U.S. embassies in Nairobi and Dar es Salaam, Kenya and Tanzania in 1998. The disastrous attack, of course, was the attack of 11 September in, in 2001 in New York. Having said all of what I, as I, I was talking about now, now the perfect representation of the, of the disorder of Arab regional order is the rise of what's so-called the Islamic states in Iraq and Syria in, two, in, in 2014. The occupation of Iraq in 2003 was yet another turning point uh, of the development of violent Salafism. It gave, it gave the birth to the Islamic State. The group, though, it's one of its kind. It does not only use violence to achieve its goal, but also rejects the nation state system and divides the world into two groups, the House of Islam, Dar al-Islam, where all the Muslims are subjected to their version of Islam, which is Salafism, and the house of war, Dar, uh, Dar al Harb, basically those who are against them. Be Muslim or not Muslim, by the way. Uh, unlike some, some uh, other Islamic movements, such as the Muslim Brotherhood, Ikhwan, uh, in, in, in Egypt and elsewhere, and Hezbollah in Lebanon, which believe uh, in the political engagement, uh, such as election and democracy, parliamentary, uh, parliamentary accountability, Daesh, or the Islamic State, does not intend to engage in this political life or contribute toward the building of such, uh, such order. It exclusively uses violence to achieve its utopian ideal, ideal, uh, utopian ideal caliphate. Although it has lost much of its territory by now, the group will continue to pose security threat, not only at the regional level, but uh, also at the international level too. Now to conclude, and I hope uh, I didn't take much of your time, mm -hmm. the region still lack, lacks uh, regional, uh, uh, regional leadership to solve this regional uh, 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 problem. The subsystem lack lacks a, a security system and it is a unique for the absence of uh, region-wide architecture. The region's, con the region's con contested states seem to be unraveling into smaller communities and sects, religious affiliation, tribal groups and ethnicities. Now, as, a, as a consequence, the region exhibits signs of deep social trauma and crisis of identity at both state and the society level. The region still suffers from the lack of an alternative forces to fulfill the expectation of the people, as I said, and eventually we will see in the future that those radical groups will still be appealing to the public uh, to take over uh, as an alternative forces uh, to achieve uh, change whatever that change is. Um, thus, violent Salafism is a phenomenon that will not cease at any time soon. Not only that, violent Salafism catalyst on other sub-state actors, mainly the Shiite militia, Iran proxies in the region, mainly, uh, uh, namely Hezbollah in Lebanon, 
that is recently been active in Syria, the Houthis in Yemen. Uh, I hope uh, you all follow the news. Just two, three days ago, there was a rocket uh, was launched against from from Yemen against uh, against Saudi Arabia. And we also have this recent phenomena of the Popular Mobilization Units or Forces, PMU, in Iraq. Those Iranian-backed militia pose a threat not only to the security of, of these countries they operate in, but also pose a, a massive a threat to the stability of the entire region. And I'll stop here. Thank you very much indeed.